The Orange Revolution Ukrainian, Pomeranchova Revolution, Pomeranchova Revolution, was a series of protests and political events that took place in Ukraine from late November 2004 to January 2005, in the immediate aftermath of the runoff vote of the 2004 Ukrainian presidential election, which was claimed to be marred by massive corruption, voter intimidation and direct electoral fraud. Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, was the focal point of the movement's campaign of civil resistance, with thousands of protesters demonstrating daily. Nationwide, the democratic revolution was highlighted by a series of acts of civil disobedience, sit-ins, and general strikes organized by the opposition movement. The protests were prompted by reports from several domestic and foreign election monitors as well as the widespread public perception that the results of the runoff vote of 21 November 2004 between leading candidates Viktor Yushchenko and Viktor Yanukovych were rigged by the authorities in favor of the latter. The nationwide protests succeeded when the results of the original runoff were annulled, and a re-vote was ordered by Ukraine's Supreme Court for 26 December 2004. Under intense scrutiny by domestic and international observers, the second runoff was declared to be fair and free. The final results showed a clear victory for Yushchenko, who received about 52% of the vote, compared to Yanukovych's 44%. Yushchenko was declared the official winner and with his inauguration on 23 January 2005 in Kiev, the Orange Revolution ended. In the following years, the Orange Revolution had a negative connotation among pro-government circles in Belarus and Russia. In the 2010 presidential election, Yanukovych became Yushchenko's successor as Ukrainian president after the Central Election Commission and international observers declared that the presidential election was conducted fairly. Yanukovych was ousted from power four years later following the February 2014 Euromaidan clashes in Kiev's Independence Square. Unlike the bloodless Orange Revolution, these protests resulted in more than 100 deaths, occurring mostly between 18 and 20 February 2014. Background Gongod's assassination, Kuchmagate crisis Horhy Gongodz, a Ukrainian journalist and the founder of Ukrainska Pravda, an internet newspaper well known for publicizing the corruption or unethical conduct of Ukrainian politicians, was kidnapped and murdered in 2000. Though no one accused Ukrainian President Kuchma of personally murdering him, persistent rumors suggested that the president had ordered the killing. This murder sparked a movement against Kuchma in 2000 that can be seen as the origin of the Orange Revolution in 2004. After two terms of presidency 1994 to 2005 and the cassette scandal of 2000 that ruined his image irreparably, Kuchma decided not to run for a third term in the 2004 elections and instead supported Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych in the presidential race against Viktor Yushchenko of the Our Ukraine People's Self-Defense Bloc. <laughs> Topic. Causes of the Orange Revolution The state of Ukraine during the 2004 presidential election is considered an ideal condition for an outburst from the public. During this time Ukrainians were impatient while waiting for the economic and political transformation. The results of the election were thought to be fraudulent and considered a nail in the coffin of the preceding events. Topic. Factors enabling the Orange Revolution The Ukrainian regime that was in power before the Orange Revolution created a path for a democratic society to emerge. It was based on a competitive authoritarian regime that is considered a hybrid regime, allowing for a democracy and market economy to come to life. The election fraud definitely emphasized the Ukrainian citizens' desire for a more pluralistic type of government. The cassette scandal definitely sparked the public's desire to create a social reform movement. It not only undermined the people's respect for Kuchma as a president, but also for the elite ruling class in general. Because of Kuchma's scandalous behavior, he lost many of his supporters with high-ranking government positions. Many of the government officials who were on his side went on to fully support the election campaign of Yushchenko and well as his ideas in general. After a clear lack of faith in the government had been instilled in the Ukrainian population, Yushchenko's role had never been more important to the revolution. Yushchenko was a charismatic candidate who showed no signs of being corrupt. 
Yushchenko was on the same level as his constituents and presented his ideas in a non-Soviet way. Young Ukrainian voters were extremely important to the outcome of the 2004 presidential election. This new wave of younger people had different views of the main figures in Ukraine. They were exposed to a lot of negativity from the Kuchmagate and therefore had very skewed visions about Kuchma and his ability to lead their country. The abundance of younger people who participated showed an increasing sense of nationalism that was developing in the country. The Orange Revolution had enough popular impact that it interested people of all ages. In 2017, in the Putin interviews, with the director Oliver Stone, the Russian president Vladimir Putin said that the people's disagreement with the election results appeared to be genuine, but the subsequent riots were supported by U.S. intervention which led to them getting exurbated. Topic. Prelude to the Orange Revolution Topic. Political alliances In late 2002, Viktor Yushchenko, Our Ukraine, Alexander Moroz, Socialist Party of Ukraine, Petro Simonenko, Communist Party of Ukraine, and Yulia Tymoshenko, Yulia Tymoshenko Bloc issued a joint statement concerning the beginning of a state revolution in Ukraine. The communists left the alliance. Simonenko opposed the idea of a single candidate from the alliance in the Ukrainian presidential election of 2004, but the other three parties remained allies until July 2006. In the autumn of 2001, both Timoshenko and Yushchenko had broached the idea of setting up such a coalition. On the 2nd of July 2004, R Ukraine and the Yulia Timoshenko bloc established the Force of the People, a coalition which aimed to stop the destructive process that has, as a result of the incumbent authorities, become a characteristic for Ukraine." At the time President Leonid Kuchma and Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych were the "...incumbent authorities," in Ukraine. The pact included a promise by Viktor Yushchenko to nominate Timoshenko as Prime Minister if Yushchenko won the October 2004 presidential election. Ukraine presidential election campaign 2004 The 2004 presidential election in Ukraine eventually featured two main candidates. Sitting Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych, largely supported by Leonid Kuchma the outgoing president of Ukraine who had already served two terms in office from 1994 and was precluded from running himself due to the constitutional term limits. The opposition candidate Viktor Yushchenko, leader of the Our Ukraine faction in the Ukrainian parliament and a former prime minister in office 1999-2001 the election took place in a highly charged atmosphere, with the Yanukovych team and the outgoing president's administration using their control of the government and state apparatus for intimidation of Yushchenko and his supporters. In September 2004 Yushchenko suffered dioxin poisoning under mysterious circumstances. While he survived and returned to the campaign trail, the poisoning undermined his health and altered his appearance dramatically, his face remains disfigured by the consequences to this day. The two main candidates were neck and neck in the first round vote held on 31 October 2004, winning 39.32% and 39.87% 39 of the vote casts. The candidates who came third and fourth collected much less, Alexander Moroz of the Socialist Party of Ukraine and Petro Simonenko of the Communist Party of Ukraine received 5.82% and 4.97%, respectively. Since no candidate had won more than 50% of the cast ballots, Ukrainian law mandated a runoff vote between two leading candidates. After the announcement of the runoff, Alexander Moroz threw his support behind Viktor Yushchenko. The Progressive Socialist Party's Natalia Vitrenko, who won 1.53% of the vote, endorsed Yanukovych, who hoped for Petro Simonenko's endorsement but did not receive it. In the wake of the first round of the election, many complaints emerged regarding voting irregularities in favor of the government supported Yanukovych. However, as it was clear that neither nominee was close enough to collecting an outright majority in the first round, challenging the initial result would not have affected the final outcome of the round. So the complaints were not actively pursued and both candidates concentrated on the upcoming runoff, scheduled for 21 November. 
Pora activists were arrested in October 2004, but the release of many, reportedly on President Kuchma's personal order, gave growing confidence to the opposition. Yushchenko's supporters originally adopted orange as the signifying color of his election campaign. Later, the color gave its name to an entire series of political labels, such as the oranges Pomeranchevi in Ukrainian for his political camp and its supporters. At the time when the mass protests grew, and especially when they brought about political change in the country, the term Orange Revolution came to represent the entire series of events. In view of the success of using color as a symbol to mobilize supporters, the Yanukovych camp chose blue for themselves. Protests Protests began on the eve of the second round of voting, as the official count differed markedly from exit poll results which gave Yushchenko up to an 11% lead, while official results gave the election win to Yanukovych by 3%. While Yanukovych supporters have claimed that Yushchenko's connections to the Ukrainian media explain this disparity, the Yushchenko team publicized evidence of many incidents of electoral fraud in favor of the government-backed Yanukovych, witnessed by many local and foreign observers. These accusations were reinforced by similar allegations, though at a lesser scale, during the first presidential run of 31 October. The Yushchenko campaign publicly called for protest on the dawn of Election Day, 21 November 2004, when allegations of fraud began to spread in the form of leaflets printed and distributed by the Democratic Initiatives Foundation, announcing that Yushchenko had won, on the basis of its exit poll. Beginning on of November 2004, massive protests started in cities across Ukraine, the largest, in Kiev's Maidan Nazaliznosti Independence Square, attracted an estimated 500,000 participants, who on 23 November 2004, peacefully marched in front of the headquarters of the Verkhovna Rada, the Ukrainian parliament, many wearing orange or carrying orange flags, the color of Yushchenko's campaign coalition. One of the most prominent activists of that time was Periska Korolik, subsequently bestowed with the Order of Princess Olga. From the 22nd of November Pora, undertook the management of the protests in Kiev until the end of the demonstration. The local councils in Kiev, Lviv, and several other cities passed, with the wide popular support of their constituency, a largely symbolic refusal to accept the legitimacy of the official election results, and Yushchenko took a symbolic presidential oath. This oath Taken by Yushchenko in half-empty parliament chambers, lacking the quorum as only the Yushchenko-leaning factions were present, could not have any legal effect. But it was an important symbolic gesture meant to demonstrate the resolve of the Yushchenko campaign not to accept the compromised election results. In response, Yushchenko's opponents denounced him for taking an illegitimate oath, and even some of his moderate supporters were ambivalent about this act, while a more radical side of the Yushchenko camp demanded him to act even more decisively. Some observers argued that this symbolic presidential oath might have been useful to the Yushchenko camp should events have taken a more confrontational route. In such a scenario, this presidential oath Yushchenko took could be used to lend legitimacy to the claim that he, rather than his rival who tried to gain the presidency through alleged fraud, was a true commander-in-chief authorized to give orders to the military and security agencies. At the same time, local officials in eastern and southern Ukraine, the stronghold of Viktor Yanukovych, started a series of actions alluding to the possibility of the breakup of Ukraine or an extra-constitutional federalization of the country, should their candidates claimed victory not be recognized. Demonstrations of public support for Yanukovych were held throughout eastern Ukraine and some of his supporters arrived in Kiev. In Kiev the pro-Yanukovych demonstrators were far outnumbered by Yushchenko supporters, whose ranks were continuously swelled by new arrivals from many regions of Ukraine. The scale of the demonstrations in Kiev was unprecedented. By many estimates, on some days they drew up to one million people to the streets. In freezing weather, in total 18.4% of Ukrainians have claimed to have taken part in the Orange Revolution across Ukraine. Political developments Although Yushchenko entered into negotiations with outgoing President Leonid Kuchma in an effort to peacefully resolve the situation, the negotiations broke up on 24 November 2004. Yanukovych was officially certified as the victor by the Central Election Commission, which itself was allegedly involved in falsification of electoral results by withholding the information it was receiving from local districts and running a parallel illegal computer server to manipulate the results. 
The next morning after the certification took place, Yushchenko spoke to supporters in Kiev, urging them to begin a series of mass protests, general strikes and sit-ins with the intent of crippling the government and forcing it to concede defeat. In view of the threat of illegitimate government acceding to power, Yushchenko's camp announced the creation of the Committee of National Salvation which declared a nationwide political strike. On 1 December 2004, the Verkhovna Rada passed a resolution that strongly condemned pro-separatist and federalization actions, and passed a non-confidence vote in the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, a decision Prime Minister Yanukovych refused to recognize. By the Constitution of Ukraine, the non-confidence vote mandated the government's resignation, but the parliament had no means to enforce a resignation without the cooperation of Prime Minister Yanukovych and outgoing President Kuchma. On 3 December 2004, Ukraine's Supreme Court finally broke the political deadlock. The court decided that due to the scale of the electoral fraud it became impossible to establish the election results. Therefore, it invalidated the official results that would have given Yanukovych the presidency. As a resolution, the court ordered a re-vote of the runoff to be held on 26 December 2004. This decision was seen as a victory for the Yushchenko camp while Yanukovych and his supporters favored a rerun of the entire election rather than just the runoff, as a second-best option if Yanukovych was not awarded the presidency. On 8 December 2004 the parliament amended laws to provide a legal framework for the new round of elections. The parliament also approved the changes to the constitution, implementing a political reform backed by outgoing President Kuchma as a part of a political compromise between the acting authorities and opposition. In November 2009 Yanukovych stated that although his victory in the elections was taken away, he gave up this victory in order to avoid bloodshed. I didn't want mothers to lose their children and wives their husbands. I didn't want dead bodies from Kiev to flow down the Dnipro. I didn't want to assume power through bloodshed. Topic: <inaudible> Rerun election. The 26th of December revote was held under intense scrutiny of local and international observers. The preliminary results announced by the Central Election Commission on the 28th of December gave Yushchenko and Yanukovych 51.99% and 44.20% of the total vote, which represented a change in the vote by plus 5.39% to Yushchenko and minus 5.27% from Yanukovych, respectively, when compared to the November poll. The Yanukovych team attempted to mount a fierce legal challenge to the election results using both the Ukrainian courts and the Election Commission complaint procedures. However, all their complaints were dismissed as without merit by both the Supreme Court of Ukraine and the Central Election Commission. On 10 January 2005 the Election Commission officially declared Yushchenko as the winner of the presidential election with the final results falling within 0.01% of the preliminary ones. This election commission announcement cleared the way for Yushchenko's inauguration as the president of Ukraine. The official ceremony took place in the Verkhovna Rada building on 23 January 2005 and was followed by the public inauguration of the newly sworn president at Maidan Nazaliznosti Independence Square in front of hundreds of thousands of his supporters. This event brought the Ukrainian Orange Revolution to its peaceful conclusion. Topic. Role of Ukrainian intelligence and security agencies According to one version of events recounted by the New York Times, Ukrainian security agencies played an unusual role in the Orange Revolution, with a KGB successor agency in the former Soviet state providing qualified support to the political opposition. As per the paper report, on 28 November 2004 over 10,000 MVS internal ministry troops were mobilized to put down the protests in Independence Square in Kiev by the order of their commander, Lt. Gen. Sergei Popkov. The SBU Security Service of Ukraine, a successor to the KGB in Ukraine warned opposition leaders of the crackdown. Oleksandr Galaka, head of GER military intelligence made calls to prevent bloodshed. Colonel Gen. Ihor Smeshko SBU chief and Maj. Gen. Vitaly Romanchenko military counterintelligence chief both claimed to have warned Popkov to pull back his troops, which he did, preventing bloodshed. 
In addition to the desire to avoid bloodshed, the New York Times article suggests that Slovaki, as the security officers are often called in the countries of the former Soviet Union, were motivated by personal aversion to the possibility of having to serve President Yanukovych, who was in his youth convicted of robbery and assault and had alleged connection with corrupt businessmen, especially if he were to ascend to the presidency by fraud. The personal feelings of Gen. Smeshko towards Yanukovych may also have played a role. Additional evidence of Yushchenko's popularity and at least partial support among the SBU officers is shown by the fact that several embarrassing proofs of electoral fraud, including incriminating wiretap recordings of conversations among the Yanukovych campaign and government officials discussing how to rig the election, were provided to the Yushchenko camp. These conversations were likely recorded and provided to the opposition by sympathizers in the Ukrainian security services. According to Able Police, Kuchma was concerned about its reputation in the West, because of lack of natural resources to finance his regime he had to show a commitment to democracy in order to be targeted for Western financial assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Internet usage Throughout the demonstrations, Ukraine's emerging Internet usage facilitated by news sites which began to disseminate the Kuchma tapes was an integral part of the Orange Revolutionary process. It has even been suggested that the Orange Revolution was the first example of an Internet-organized mass protest. Analysts believe that the Internet and mobile phones allowed an alternative media to flourish that was not subject to self-censorship or overt control by President Kuchma and his allies and pro-democracy activists such as Pora, were able to use mobile phones and the Internet to coordinate election monitoring and mass protests. 2004 Ukrainian constitutional changes As part of the Orange Revolution, the Ukrainian constitution was changed to shift powers from the presidency to the parliament. This was Alexander Moroz's price for his decisive role in winning Yushchenko the presidency. The communists also supported these measures. These came into effect in 2006 during which Yanukovych's party of regions won the parliamentary election, creating a coalition government with the socialists and the communists under his leadership. As a result, President Viktor Yushchenko had to deal with a powerful Prime Minister Viktor Yanukovych who had control of many important portfolios. His premiership ended in late 2007 after Yushchenko had succeeded in his months-long attempt to dissolve parliament. After the election, Yanukovych's party again was the largest, but Timoshenko's finished far ahead of Yushchenko's for second place. The Orange parties won a very narrow majority, permitting a new government under Timoshenko, but Yushchenko's political decline continued to his poor showing in the 2010 presidential election. On 1 October 2010, the Constitutional Court of Ukraine overturned the 2004 amendments, considering them unconstitutional. 2010 presidential election A circuit administrative court in Kiev forbade mass actions at Maidan Nizaliznosti from 9 January 2010 to 5 February 2010. The mayor's office had requested this in order to avoid non-standard situations during the aftermath of the 2010 presidential election. Apparently, in particular, the party of regions, all Ukrainian Union, Fatherland, and Svoboda had applied for a permit to demonstrate there. Incumbent President Viktor Yushchenko got 5, 5% 5 of votes during the election. Ukraine is a European democratic country, said Yushchenko in a sort of political will at the polling station. It is a free nation and free people. According to him, this is one of the great achievements of the Orange Revolution. In the 2010 presidential election Viktor Yanukovych was declared the winner which was labeled by some Yanukovych supporters as an end to this orange nightmare. Immediately after his election Yanukovych promised to clear the debris of misunderstanding and old problems that emerged during the years of the Orange Power. According to influential Party of Regions member Renat Akhmedov the ideals of the Orange Revolution won at the 2010 election. We had a fair and democratic independent election. The entire world recognized it, and international observers confirmed its results. That's why the ideals of the Orange Revolution won. According to Yulia Timoshenko the 2010 elections was a missed chance to become a worthy member of the European family and to put an end to the rule of the oligarchy. 
Topic: Legacy. President Viktor Yushchenko decreed in 2005 that the 22nd of November, the starting day of the Orange Revolution, will be a non-public holiday, Day of Freedom. This date was moved to the 22nd of January and merged with Unification Day by President Viktor Yanukovych late December 2011. President Yanukovych stated he moved Day of Freedom because of numerous appeals from the public. Outright vote rigging diminished after the 2004 presidential election. No officials involved in the 2004 elections that preceded the Orange Revolution were convicted for election fraud. A 2007 research revealed that opinion about the nature of the Orange Revolution had barely shifted since 2004 and that the attitudes about it in the country remained divided along the same largely geographical lines that it had been at the time of the revolution, West and Central Ukraine being more positive about the events and South and Eastern Ukraine more cynical. Seniors also this research also showed that Ukrainians in total had a less positive view on the Orange Revolution in 2007 than they had in 2005. It has been suggested that since the Orange Revolution was impactful enough to interest people of all ages, it increased the overall unity of Ukraine. During the elections campaign of the 2012 Ukrainian parliamentary election, the Party of Regions campaign focused heavily on what they called the coach and ruins of five years of Orange leadership. Outside Ukraine In March 2005 Ukrainian Foreign Minister Boris Tarasuk stated that Ukraine would not be exporting revolution. During Alexander Lukashenko's inauguration ceremony as President of Belarus of of January 2011 Lukashenko vowed that Belarus would never have its own version of the Orange Revolution and Georgia's 2003 Rose Revolution. In the aftermath of the 2011 South Ossetian presidential election in December 2011 and during the protests following the 2011 Russian elections also in December 2011 the ambassador of South Ossetia to the Russian Federation Dmitry Medoyev and Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin and Putin's supporters named the Orange Revolution an infamous foreknowledge for their countries. Putin also claimed that the organizers of the Russian protests in December 2011 were former Russian advisors to Yushchenko during his presidency and were transferring the Orange Revolution to Russia. A 4 February 2012 rally in favor of Putin was named the anti-Orange protest. In 2013 a Russian state Duma Oleg Nilov and former fellow Russian politician Sergei Glaziev referred to political adversaries as different personalities in some sort of orange or bright shorts," and "...diplomats and bureaucrats that appeared after the years of the orange hysteria." In 2016 the Russian newspaper Izvestia claimed, "...in Central Asia weak regimes are already being attacked by extremists and orange revolutions." In Russian nationalist circles the Orange Revolution has been linked with fascism because, albeit marginal, Ukrainian nationalist extreme right-wing groups and Ukrainian Americans including Viktor Yushchenko wife, Katerina Yushchenko, who was born in the United States were involved in the demonstrations. Russian nationalist groups see both as branches of the same tree of fascism. The involvement of Ukrainian Americans lead them to believe the Orange Revolution was steered by the CIA. Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Orange Winter, a feature documentary about the Orange Revolution by Andrei Zagdansky. Role of Internet-based information flows and technologies in electoral revolutions, the case of Ukraine's Orange Revolution. Lysenko, VV, and De Souza, KC. First Monday, 15 9, 2010 2. The Economic Policy of Ukraine after the Orange Revolution by Anders Asland.